to win, yeah I wanted to win, but I was really fine for this to inspire. Beating him will matter, yeah, to me it will be a challenge, it will be a good story to tell the kids. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your first time to the game, here for the red corner, artistic -y. so um, I didn't know that she'd take up the sport that she's taken up. I thought the gymnastics might um, go on, but she's always been very sporty. <laughs> I mean, our hope and our pray, of course, that she would follow Laura. Laura is a, a competition rider in equestrian. Got Sam involved with the horses, of course, and the, the thing would have been wonderful to follow Laura, as Laura followed her mother. But um, Sam gave up at the age of... Yeah. 16, when she was introduced to Taekwondo. Okay. She went on to a Taekwondo class and that was the end of the horses, thank God, because the money, <laughs> the money, it was much easier with Taekwondo than horses, but mm -hmm. that was the start of it, really. Uh, I grew up on superheroes, Bruce Lee, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Youngster six, highly competitive. I was a bit of the runt of the litter, though. Um, wasn't a natural athletic sports person. So my, my answer to be like a superhero, I turned to martial arts. Yeah, I grew up on Rocky films, really inspired, you know. And when I was actually 13, 14, I was a bit chubby, I said to my mum, Mum, how can I be like Sylvester Stallone? She said, well, you've got to eat right and train. And that's basically when my training properly started. But I don't know anyone called Phil Else. He's only got one name to me, and that's Long Hairs. He was a bit of a hippie, had long hair. I remember we used to grab his hair sometimes. Not, Although that's illegal, but when you're training, you can always be in boys. Um, I trained MMA with, with Reedy. You know, I was just basically a jiu-jitsu guy. You know, I, I did a bit of, you know, I, I knew how to grapple a little bit. Um, he really showed me the difference between grappling and a, and a fight. You know, he always knocked me out on my first on my first ever lesson. He just gave some really good advice, actually. He um, probably wouldn't even remember, but one thing I did I did like, now that I think about it, was, um, yeah, I'd already had most of my amateur fights by that point, and, uh, yeah, he he asked me if I'd had any fights, and kind of, yeah, I said that I did the amateurs, and he asked kind of what level they were at, and I kind of just made an offhand joke about how, uh, you know, they kind of been that great because I'd been winning pretty much all my fights, and, uh, you know, he, he just kind of said, you kind of got a little bit strangely intense for a guy that I'd only just met. It's kind of, you need to be careful. If you start talking about yourself like that, you, you know, you start believing it and you won't reach your goals, you know, kind of, you thought you did well. You know, you just need to move on to the next challenge. And that was kind of, I say, something that he probably doesn't even remember, but really stuck with me as an 18-year-old kid, you know. Um, so, yeah, I guess I owe him one for that. Um, well, I guess, yeah, career-wise, Winning this fight will be you know, a good step up for me, having the shock no belt. It'll be very, very useful for getting future fights on other shows. Ready for this one. Ten seconds, go on, come on. The thing that makes this fight interesting is that we're so similar. Yeah. Yeah, physically, you know, we're both pretty big. Um, 
know, add the weight. You know, we both have built like tanks, and we both tend to have the same kind of style. We both come forwards a lot, a lot of aggressive kind of wrestling, and slamming people into the, the mats, and trying to beat each other, beat people up on the floor. And we're both in pretty good shape as well, so I think he'll probably go the distance unless something, you know, maybe someone will make a mistake and get finished early, but I think it's going to be a long kind of draw now. So I've been having one-on-ones with Gabriella, who's one of the other fighters here, and we've been going through the game plan and trying to learn more and just drill the techniques that I'll need for the competition, because the other girls are a lot more experienced than I think I am quite nervous, because I've never really, before my weight category was 57 to 63, and I sat really happily in the middle, and now I've got to get down to 60, which I'm not at right now. So I've never had to do a kind of, you're in a week and you've got to lose two kilograms, which I know they said is fine because I've never done it before. I'm like, can I do that? Yeah, the so training's going really well. It's natural because I'm doing the hard sparring on Mondays and Wednesdays. So that's, I go home, everything aches. You need to make money. And it's not just about being, you know, the most, some of the best fighters don't get paid the most. You know, you've got to have charisma, you've got to sell yourself, you've got to be, it's a show. This is entertainment. <laughs> the reason we actually set the gym up was because Phil's fighting alone isn't enough to make a living. So uh, he needed the right facilities to train and there's nothing in the local area. Um, so we basically had to create our own facilities, create our own uh, cage, but also fighting is not um, a sole source of income and almost all of the British fighters, even the much more high profile ones, um, although they may not have day jobs, they need to supplement their income with seminars and obviously sponsorship um, is another big one. Well, the vast majority of us don't get paid much at all, you know, okay, the, the top 5% will be very you know, in the world will be very well off and you know I guess top 15% are making proper proper livings you know on it but you know, I make more money teaching than I do fighting um, you know I maybe walked away with like five or six hundred pounds from, from my last fight for three months of constant training three months of uh, having to eat optimally which is very expensive in this country you know, three months of having to pay for the ridiculous amount of uh, supplements that I have to to use, so you know, lucky if I make any money on that at all. The amount of hours, weeks of preparation, the cost of all the supplements, the training, the physio, um, the time of work that I have to take, that Phil has to take to go into the cage for 15 minutes. The amount of money you get is no one does this sport for money. Um, it's quite hard to get sponsorship in the UK for MMA because a lot of people kind of think cage fighting, don't want my brand associated with cage fighting, but trying to get companies to make that transition to these are proper athletes who work hard, who are pillars of the community, who aren't all kind of knuckle dragging thugs. Um, once you can actually start getting, get, getting companies to look at MMA as a sport rather than cage fighting as a blight on the local community, um, then we'll get the, have a bit more luck with some sponsorship. Is that good to come? Yeah. <laughs> I've been a pillar of the MMA community for nearly 20 years in this country. It was cage fighting back then, it was, there are no rules, it was all hyped up to make things sensationalised. We, well, to be fair, it was our own fault as a, as a sport, it was our own fault because when it first came around, we actively portrayed it as a certain thing. Yeah, I, mean, well, I was only a kid, so it wasn't really anything to do with me. I guess that's what originally mixed martial arts used to kind of sensationalise, and they needed something so they'd get the funding so that all these fighters can do it for a living. Now, it's not. I mean, we, it, we want to make it a family sport. It's not, we don't want dodgy thugs and gangster images. You know, it's a, it's a proper martial art. Cage fighter sounds a little bit harder and cooler than uh, net fighting, which is basically what the, the cage does as a net. It stops you from falling out, you know. Objectively, the, the term is fine, you know, it's descriptive, it's apt, but yeah, it's just all the connotations that it, it has that come with it, you know. As soon as you tell someone that you're a, a cage fighter, they make all these judgments about you and they, they know nothing. You know, I don't like the idea that I can be judged based on a term. My friends at home, workmates, they do think, oh, that's just brutal. It's people literally just trying to beat each other up. And it does make me feel quite cross that they still think that. 
I know so many awesome people that I've met through the sport, and to have them tarnish that brush actually offends me quite a bit. You know, yeah, you can look around the gym right now, you'll see physiotherapists, lawyers, mothers, fathers, you know, there's just, everyone's hard working, everyone's just normal people that enjoy the sport, they're not, they're not case fighters, you know? Yeah, the traditionalists in karate and keto and boxing, they don't, they're, they're starting to see now that we are true martial artists, that they didn't understand to start with, oh, they're just a bunch of fucks fighting in a cage. And, and to a lesser degree, the, the general public Think the same thing, you know. I didn't know much about it other than the cage fighting, which probably is what everybody thinks. And um, Sam has told me more about it, which has explained more. But it's still um, a sport that's fairly savage, quite <laughs> frankly. You know, when you think of fighting like that, you do normally think of men fighting rather than than girls, because it's. It's not a natural thing. I mean, it's fine, but it's um, but it's changing. I mean, girl football players now. Um, there's not a female rugby team yet, is there? Cause, cause yeah, that there is. Is there? Yeah. That just shows how much attention you pay to women's sport, really. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and uh, well, that would be even picking. worse than it uh, than uh, MMA, wouldn't it? I think rugby is one of the toughest sports going. Good, that's it. Maybe a little shots. But you have to be very intelligent. Uh, very athletic, you have to plan strategy. It's not just about coming in here being a badass. You, you know, that's all very well if you just want one or two fights. And I don't even consider it a fight. To me, this is a competition. I was a soldier, I was a paratrooper. And I left the army because I don't want to kill people. That's, that's real fighting with a gun. This is a sport, two consenting adults. And to me, it's no more vicious or it's not even violent. No more vicious than a game of rugby. The difference for me is before these two came along, I did the sport myself and I, I understand the sport. And actually, Phil's had very, very few injuries ever from fights. His much more serious injuries have been from genuine accidents during training. training. When he actually goes into the cage, with the sport being as safe as it is, he's very, very unlikely to come out with any kind of serious injury. He could get knocked out. Um, it's never happened, but even then, um, I don't really worry about him getting hurt. To be honest, uh, if he were a boxer or if he was into motocross or um, you know, or rugby, actually, yeah, I'm probably more worried about him going into a rugby match than an MMA match. Um, so yeah, it's a lot safer than people think it is. So whichever sport you choose, to a degree, there's there's an element. But yes, fighting and getting hit is not something a parent likes to see its child taking, especially if. A girl, <laughs> but um, if it's what she wants to do, then that's what she does. For most fighters, especially in this country, you know, we, we do it because we we love the challenge and we love the competition and to fight. We don't do it because we're going to make loads of money out of it. So it just isn't isn't the case. Hopefully, in the future, but not right now. Yeah, yeah feeling good. Glad that I've weighed in, yeah. and that that's all on the right way. So the last three days of having hardly anything to eat and drink has been worth it. So we know a little bit of background, so a lot of kickboxing, quite a bit of jiu-jitsu, whereas I've literally just done taekwondo. So we're keeping it all fairly basic, otherwise I'll get confused, and just sticking to the simple things I can do. I think you just want to dominate the outside, you know, keep it very far away where you're dominating, where you hit hard, yeah. but you've got all that power. When I thought she was backing off a bit and I could get those punches and those kicks in, then I kind of saw it in her that she just dropped her hands a bit and I don't know. It was probably because I was feeling more comfortable. I thought, yeah, I can do this, I can finish this. I did feel more comfortable when I had her at a distance and I could throw the punches and I could throw the kicks so I felt I could dictate it then. I felt we were up against the fence. It was more... I knew I was in the right position because I was on top but I felt she was in more control and she knew what she was doing. 
she was throwing some heavy knees in that weren't very comfortable and I did want to get out but my head was kind of stuck and I was also worried about her. I was, I, was, I was watching it for your <laughs> It was good. So, we have our winner by judges, Sam. I'm proud of him. He's worked very hard for this fight. Uh, I think he's going to win. I'm not worried he's going to get hurt. But like we talked about before, it's hard thinking if he loses, how disappointed he'll be for everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but I will be kind of wringing my hands and kind of tapping my feet my time there. He yeah, actually goes out to the cage. I guess on paper he does have a slight edge. You know, he has he has fought more uh, more consistently over the last couple of years, and you know he's fought all over the world. So he's got an edge in experience. He's got more cage time than I do in terms of actual competitive hours in the cage. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that we're, we're pretty equally matched, which is why it's such an interesting fight. I just, I, I can't even get upset about l losing because it was just such, it was just so shit. You lost like a man. I didn't cry afterwards. No, exactly. You, you, held your nice head up, you held your head up and you shook his hand and, and that was that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so now, now, now that I've lost, I just, I just want it so much. I want to get back in there. <laughs> Obviously, you know, if I was in Phil's position, I'd, I'd be gutted as well because you don't really feel like you've had the opportunity to show everything you've been working. You guys will have seen like it works so so hard in this camp. You know, I've worked out in my camp as well, and you really want to show everything that you've been doing in the cage. And so, in a way, I, I feel bad that he ain't got to showcase that. But at the same time, I'm I'm not going to complain. Well, well done, mate. Um, yeah, I'm not going to call out for a rematch or anything just yet. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, go away and work that back position, <laughs> and then maybe in a few years or whatever we'll, we'll talk again. Oh, pleasure to meet you. Very much. Nice to meet you. It's always nice to fight the poor guys. It's been so long since anyone's beaten me pretty much in anything that I've actually wanted to win at, you know, that I've forgotten how motivational it can be. So suddenly it really matters to me more. I definitely, definitely will be changing up a few things, talking to other, you know, all the other coaches, seeing what they think, seeing what they think I should be doing now. Um, I'll, I'll be back. It just, it just sucks, man. I'm certainly not going to give up just because I've you know, lost. Um, yeah, you know, it, it does help, but I can already my mind's racing about the things that I want to change and things that I want to do to make the to make the next one better.